Hey, what's going on guys, it's Brent. We're gonna be taking the movie Dune and I'm gonna be recreating the Caladan library where Paul meets the Bene Gesserit leader, puts his hand in that pain box. It's a pretty simple set. There's these bookcases that go around the room in this octagon shape. There's a rug, a few chairs, and there's this really interesting door. The idea is we're gonna create this in Maya. We're gonna use designer, painter, maybe some ZBrush at some point and take it all the way to Unreal Engine. All right guys, let's get started. Let's make a new substance graph. We'll make a metallic rough library stone. Boom. Put the base color up here. Normal map. Got the roughness and color next to each other. Metallic. We won't be using image occlusion and height. Let's make a levels here. And I'm just gonna throw a brick in here real quick. Really good reference is this one here to see what it looks like up close. It's like a really thin outline with that big stone slab. Make a Tile sampler, polygon. I control that taper a little bit better. I'm gonna put it into the pattern and I'm gonna change the pattern type, to pattern input. And turn down the tile to two. Okay, put it right on the edge. Gradient for the scale, scale one. These are probably two by four. And let's see, are these offset from each other? Yes, they are. So let's go down to offset. One thing I noticed on this image, it's kind of irregular. There's lines. So try to get that. So let's do, let's try a couple things. I'll try a Warps the input image multiple times into various directions. Try that. Put the input there. I want kind of a soft noise for this. I think we'll just do a cloud and we do a blur. Let's see, max, min, chain, maybe max. So I want that in and out feeling that you see there. Kind of breaks that, that edge a bit. And then I want to chip it off a little bit. So we can do a slope blur. And for the slope, try this. Try a couple different types. Or maybe this one. The min, max. Try this one. For our levels on there, I just want to eat into that a little bit. All right, so there's like these little chips in it that you see here. I don't really see any like hairline fractures or anything in these. I was thinking about adding that, but don't really see it. I will add some little in and out though. So I can do is pull this down. Let's delete those. So this is my first. So this is the brick input here. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm just going to expose this handle. Because I want these to be in sync with each other. And we're going to do a color random. Do a blend. This one and this one. Darken. Multiply. It is. Run this through. Just a little bit. Then we'll do a flood fill. And then right here, we're just going to take this flood fill and add a gradient uh, random angle. Random degrees. Now for this one, it's going to be randomly jutting out, which is kind of more interesting than just in and out, it's like angled in and out. So probably too intense, something like that. Give it a little bit of visual interest and we can always drive that. I'm going to add in a noise so that we can uh, work on shaping those little chunks that's taken out of each one of those bricks and just going to clamp it here. 
then we'll just add it back into the stack. Blend this, this, and subtract that, and then dial around the opacity a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a directional blur so that I can break up the per brick uh, separation from those little imperfections so they don't all run together brick to brick uh, so that it's separated. The way each tile it breaks here, so it looks like that they were chipped before they were laid. But sometimes you would want that kind of more of a manufacturing defect or quarrying or whatever. So I'm gonna do a gradient. Gradient editor, I'm just gonna pick a gradient gonna go whoop. drop the precision it's gonna delete out some of these guys duplicate this guy uh, a noise and break up that detail, uh, further adding some more surface uh, color variation into the brick faces, and then add it back into the stack, into the new gradient map. I'm just gonna add this black and white spots, and then just kind of put that darkening on top so that it further redrives that stone face a little bit. Then I add a levels. I'm gonna grab this guy. This will be my roughness base. Crank it over here. Do an HSL. And we'll do a blend between the normal one and the HSL. And we'll just grab this guy. Hit D just to nest it. This is like a little bit too yellow. I'm noodling around the color a little bit, and then I'm going to take a uniform color and just drop it over top, almost like a tint, to just kind of tint it into the range where I'm kind of comfortable it's sitting at. I'm just going to jump forward a little bit just because... It was a bit noodly. So here what I'm doing now is I'm taking that grunge and instead of just painting it by hand, I'm just going to kind of randomize this grunge around using the same directional warp technique that we used on some of the other noises to kind of do a per brick uh, grunge pattern. Then I'll take that grunge pattern, uh, kind of redefine its uh, levels and balance, and then do an HSL and just uh, do a darkened version and drive the opacity with that grunge and add it into the color. So I wasn't quite happy with how much grunge there was, so I'm just going to um, mix in that per tile variation and just kind of cut out some of the pieces so that it's a little uh, less all over the place. Then I'm going to take that same signal that I used for the color and redrive some of the roughness values so that it's the leaks are a little bit uh, shinier in the areas. So I'll just add this uniform color into this blend. Make sure that it's uh, grayscale because the other one's grayscale. And uh, plug it straight in and then I can just kind of drive that uniform color by hand uh, to get the kind of roughness values that I'm looking for where the leaks are. So what I did here is I took the grout pattern and I blurred it, redrove it, and then kind of reclamped it because what I wanted to do is get like kind of a darkening per uh, per brick. It kind of bleeds out from the grout edges so that it, um, I can darken it at the in the color with an HSL and just blend it back into the albedo and then also do the same thing with the um, roughness value so that I can kind of redrive the roughness of the, that same grout pattern.
Now, a lot of this work is just kind of like finicky, redundant work, but I'm just making sure that the surface is the right smoothness level, kind of redriving some of the height. And I wanted to pull out the uh, chipped parts of uh, the rock a little bit more, refine the edges, which was just levels and redriving it. And then I ended up deciding that the shapes were too big. So, um, and then I dialed in the color as well. Uh, but I just rescaled them so that it was, it fit a little better into the set. And that's it for today's video, guys. Please smash that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Next time, we're going to go over how I integrated this into Painter and how we finished out the asset and then imported that into Unreal. See you next time.